Welcome to another exciting edition of Anoki and Censored Guys, where we share the real life stories of our global community. Today, I'm pleased to welcome the one and only Faroz Abbas Khan to the show. There's so much I want to talk to this gentleman about, but let me just tell you that he is the esteemed director of a really, really incredible play that is coming here and is here in Toronto right now. I want to mention to you that the play is the world's first Broadway-styled musical from India. It's called Mughle Azam, which is presented by Shapurji Balanji, who produced the original film back in 1960, which was a story adapted from Anarkali, written by Imtiaz Ali Taj. For those of you who don't know, the film remains India's most expensive and highest grossing film to date. And the Broadway style musical is the most expensive Indian play, which I'm thrilled to share is here in North America, as I mentioned off the top, with a 13 citywide tour. The tour is the adventurous brainchild of Anand Dauda, who is also joining us today. So without further ado, gentlemen, congratulations on an incredible masterpiece. And thank you for bringing it here after seven years in Asia, which, by the way, folks, showcases the very best in Indian history, art, culture and technology. Thank you so much for agreeing to chat with me, guys. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Well, I, I'd like to start, first of all, seven Broadway World Awards. I mean, one of them is Best Director for Oz. After decades of service to the Indian performance art world, how does it feel to continue to being recognized until today by your peers in the community? Does it ever get old? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, I <laughs> just do my work. And I, I shut the noise off. I don't get very affected by that. Uh, I It's not that I don't care, but uh, it's just, uh, you know, uh, when you get awards, it's just a smile that comes on your face and then you have to move on. Uh, you got to respect it, but you don't take it to heart. So right. that's the way it is. And we had, this is seven Broadway World India Awards. I mean, from India, uh, we were chosen as that particular year of having created this production. So most of the people who are involved in it, uh, the costume designer, the choreographer, who is uh, in many ways the heart of this show, the choreography is the heart of this show. Yes. And you have a wonderful choreographer called Mayuri Upadhyay. So she got, and then did Manish got for costumes and the lighting designer, David, and scenic designer. So every, I think all the principal uh, activities that are there in the show have been honored. Uh, yes, uh, you feel good. But as I said, you move on. Absolutely. And, and what I'm hearing you say here for Rose is it takes a village. It takes an army to do their work. And with everyone being exceptional, the dream team is what makes it happen. So I want to ask you a little bit um, about your process. I mean, you know, a lot of people see you from the outside and all of the tremendous many years of work that you've accomplished. I want to ask you, when you are looking at the acting piece, the staging piece, the technical piece, all of these things needing to come together, what is your process as a director to ensure that, that uh, the vision is, is actually, you know, um, brought live? Because that's the difficult part, right? Like there's so many different aspects that you have to think about and it needs to feel authentic and natural and engaging yeah. and entertaining. Share your experience a little bit around directorial procedure. Uh, it's a question that uh, can keep us here for the whole day. <laughs> it's a very, very, uh, of course, it's because question. you are who yeah. you are. <laughs> right. So let me try and summarize how uh, it works. Firstly, there is no one formula for anything. Uh, I'm purely dictated by the text. I'm dictated by the content. So each play will have its own way of being done. Like there's a play of mine called Tumhari Amrita in which they only read letters. And my instruction to Shabana and Farooq Saab was that you are never going to ever memorize the lines. Now this mm -hmm. goes totally against the whole idea of acting training because you're trained to memorize and then you're supposed to perform. Here, the it was completely the opposite because they're just reading letters. So I said the day you memorize it, 
uh, you would take away from its truth and spontaneity because it requires that every time, every day that you are there, you must be very present and you must experience everything that you have at that day. And then with that life, you you speak the lives of these characters. So that was a different process. Uh, mm-hmm. And for, let us stick to Mughal Azam. In Mughal Azam, there already is a vision that is given by the great K. Asif Saab in a movie. So the first thing was to ensure that that vision uh, is being taken to a slightly different medium. And that's what the medium is the change. The vision remains the same. Aspirations remains the same. That it should be the biggest ever theater production because that was the biggest ever film that was made. Mm. Then we ensure that it is done on the scale on which the original was done. And more importantly, that we don't let down the expectations of the people who had already seen the film and the people who had heard about the film that they don't get disappointed. So right. that's the process first of making sure that all the elements that are there in terms of sets, costumes, lighting, everything, it is world-class because that was a world-class. But of course, there is a time gap. There's a 1960s in a movie and now you have a theater production. Uh, a camera can travel anywhere it wants, whereas the audience just sees one little frame, one big frame. And within that, a whole world has to be created. So, of course, we use technology. We use imaginative technology, technology not to show off, but technology at the service of the storytelling. So we use that. Uh, we had some ex- excellent collaborators, you know, in that. Uh, and naturally, when you have great collaborators, you don't tell them what to do. You just tell them what is needed in terms of the vision. So they do their job. With the acting, it was very interesting because mm-hmm. everybody has so invested in Dilip Kumar Sahab, in Prithviraj Kapoorji, in Madhubala, that whenever you talk about, I think in talk about anything Mughal, the first thing that comes to you are these three people. Yes. They, have, they almost have become, this is how the Mughals would talk and behave. And with the film, it becomes much more ingrained. And these are very, very, uh, how we got deeply etched in the memories of the audiences of almost two generations. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, uh, Mughal Azam even provided a vocabulary of love uh, to the people, that how to express love. There was a language in which you could do that. There was a way in which to do that. So mm-hmm. it provided all that. So it is very precious for people, you know. So... At the same time, we were very clear that if my actors for Mughal Azam start to imitate the original, we would have been defeated. Mm -hmm. We would defeat the original and we would not even start off with the one that we are doing. So the first thing was we did was is to uh, uh, have a process where we completely wiped out all the sounds that they may have, the tones that they may have. And so they were not playing Yusuf Saab or... Uh, Dilip Sahab or Prithviraj or Madhubala, they were playing the character of Anarkali and they had to find their own voice in it. It had to be the truth of the story rather than trying to replicate the film onto the stage. Mm-hmm. So that was the process. So for almost two, three weeks, I only worked with them. So they are completely de sort of, you know, Mughal uh, Azam <laughs> the original <laughs> yes. voice. Uh, so that all that is gone so that we have clean slate and from the clean slate they come from their own truth and that is how the process of Mughal Azam was done yes and as a director how do you know when they've nailed their truth how do you know that this is working uh, uh, we are always in the work in progress this mm-hmm. luxury we don't have like you have in cinema you nail it by taking the okay shot and then put it that in the edit in theater it continuously they have to struggle with the truth all the time mm-hmm. and so yes we know it in the rehearsals that you say the way to understand is that they are no more number one they are no more under the impression of the original actors from the film and the other time is that when you see them being very vulnerable being unpredictable in their vulnerability in that unpredictability is the truth mm. because truth is not definite truth cannot be definite truth has to be a very dynamic idea and then the mm. dynamic idea means that truth is also very fragile so you have to be very careful that when you're giving the performance that you have all of a sudden given yourself up to this character and let this character almost take 
you know, on that journey. And it does happen sometimes, it does happen always. So when they go away from the truth and start giving a predictable performance, then that's it. I think between the unpredictability and the predictability is when you understand there is truth or there is falsehood. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that is just such a valuable masterclass right there for everyone that's watching or listening and reading this. I want to ask you something, um, Anand, here. It takes a certain kind of person to take on the enormity of the task of bringing such a world-class masterpiece on tour in North America. I need to ask you, what made you decide that you wanted to take this on? Challenge. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the, the challenge that, you know, this tour offered, uh, I'd seen this play, you know, in 2017. And the day when I saw it, you know, that day I knew that, you know, if this show has to travel, and I'm sure like, you know, the makers made it so that, you know, uh, it could it could basically, you know, go from place to place. But, uh, uh, you know, this sort of, you know, musicals usually are, you know, for, for one theater, you know, uh, even if you look at the Broadway shows, you know, they're, they're meant for like one theater, they perform for like few months there or few weeks there. And, and then, you know, they move. But, uh, you know, given the size of audience that, you know, uh, currently, you know, is is the format over here in North America that, you know, you usually travel from city to city and, you know, accomplish, you know, a sort of uh, audience. So, you know, we knew that, you know, and, and especially, you know, coming out from India, you know, it, it's not that, you know, you take like a two, three hour flight and, you know, everybody's over here. There's like a long process of, you know, visas, work permits and, you know, all of that. So you would want mm -hmm. uh, to try and, you know, accomplish as many cities on the tour to, to you know, kind of amortize the cost as well uh, and, and to make this as a viable project. So, yeah, it, it had a challenge and, and uh, you know, being in the industry, you know, for 20 plus years, uh, we love to take the challenge on and, and, you know, plan it in a way that, you know, it, it becomes a process and, and then, you know, basically the process then, you know, kind of delivers. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting what you're saying because um, a lot of people, you know, take a look at a challenge as big as this and that, you know, how do I do it? And this is why they, they don't succeed. What I'm hearing you say, Anand, is that you, it sounds like it was a process of elimination. Each of the steps and phases of the challenge you and your team dealt with to get to the end result. So there's a lot of patience. There's a lot of discipline associated with that. Can you share some of that experience with the audience? Is there a specific challenge that comes to mind that was a very difficult one, but you saw it through with your team? Can you share that a little bit? Because Well, I mean, you know, every department, yeah. you know, I would say has a challenge, uh, right, you know, from you know, collecting, you know, like as simple as, you know, collecting documents for say 150 people to, you know, get through to the visa. You know, every every individual, you know, may or may not have certain sort of documents, may not have, you know, certain sort of a background. Uh, so, you know, just, just by starting from there and then, you know, traveling to 13 cities, uh, different venues have different challenges, you know, uh, different authorities have different challenges, different, uh, say like a labor union over here, in US, you know, has as challenges. So, you know, there is there is not one particular department that you know you can think of that, you know, oh, this is a bigger challenge. I think, you know, everything in itself or every department has their own roles and uh, uh, own capacities. And and you know, we as a team, you know, come together, find the solution to it. Yes, it requires a lot of uh, patience, but more than the patience, you know, commitment. Uh, mm -hmm. every team member over here is is committed to what they're doing. Uh, it's not only the people who are traveling over here. There is there is a big army of people, you know, who are still behind the scene, um, and and you know everybody is doing their job, you know, hundred percent or more, uh, for us to be you know successful over here on the ground to you know execute things. Absolutely, and for us, I wanted to ask you: Are you did you have to make some adaptive changes at all to the story, to anything at all that would be more conducive to the North American market? Um, as opposed to India um, or Asia, for example, or did you, or were you like, nope, this is the authentic, pure telling of the story, and wherever we travel with it, it's going to stay that way. I'd love your thoughts around that. Absolutely, it's pure, authentic. Mm -hmm. We don't temper with classics like this, and it's already been established. The only thing that happens is the accessibility of language. So we do have a wonderful translation. We have a translation that you would really enjoy. So if you don't know the language fully, 
then you have a running translation in English uh, for very high mm. quality. And then if you know a little bit and not more, and if you want to catch up, you have a translation. That's all you can do. I mean, uh, first of all, who am I to judge what is good for the audiences here and what's good for them? If it has worked for audiences uh, in India and in Asia, then our audience, which primarily is South Asian audience, uh, their heart beats the same in any part of the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can't change people's heart. So till I do that, I should be... Uh, sticking to what is the truth, yeah, because uh, there is a very different thing that uh, uh, culturally this is very specific. Mm -hmm. It's a very specific, and that's the beauty of it. That when you become very specific, you also become uh, global, because there is a a certain feeling about certain stories uh, that the world can relate. Because mm -hmm. there are basically only seven stories in the world, and if they're told, those stories can always connect. And this is a conflict between. Uh, uh, emperor and you know and the sun and it's about love and you keep going through it's Romeo and Juliet the same thing two people from two complete different backgrounds want to marry and then there's a whole world in between them so that story goes everywhere so who am I to and something that has withstood that's uh, you know uh, the time for almost uh, six decades and more yes. so I should only take this forward rather than try and tamper it I don't like to tamper with the classic I just want to pay a tribute to the classic absolutely and I feel like you've already answered this question but I want to ask you anyway so that we can be very definitive mm. why do you feel that a story based in ancient India is still so relevant today and captures audiences everywhere it goes I mean every generation every age group I feel like you've answered the question but I don't want to put words in your mouth tell me one time how would you respond to that I think we all feel that the one that we love, we should be allowed to express that love and that the world knows this, that uh, uh, that uh, hate uh, is, is anti-human, it's anti-love. And uh, if you want any, everybody and the society that we are looking at globally, a more open society, a liberal society, an inclusive society, a democratic society. So one of the fundamentals of democracy is to be able to express your feelings and be respected for that mm -hmm. and not to be judged on the basis of your class, caste, or religion, or whatever it is. And here is a woman, though she comes from a lowly background uh, and, and she falls in love with, a, with an emperor's son. Now, the heart doesn't distinguish anything. It has no logic. It just has only one thing, is to just go and express itself. So if she can love somebody so everybody believes is that we cannot be stopped from loving people there can right. be no barriers to love and that's i think is a very powerful story absolutely and there's so many layers um that make this story so strong in the arc of love as a woman i really f felt strongly that anarkali is such a badass role model for feminism and women today yeah. and right? just imagine yeah just imagine in in that century we're talking about uh, around the 14th century uh, for a woman to say that parda nahi jab koi khuda se bando se parda karna kya i mean if i have <sighs> you know if if i have nothing in between me and god that who are these human beings that are going to create these barriers for me and for her to challenge the most powerful man on earth yes. i think to me that cannot be a more powerful woman uh, than anarchically in many ways and for Absolutely. her to have the guts and gumption and the audacity to say that and and then because uh, she is very clear that uh, in love death is a very small price to pay right it's a very small price that's Absolutely. what lovers feel yeah and you know in in our culture you know life is our spirit's life it's we're, yeah. we're just in a body to experience the next phase yeah. of our journey you know that's right yeah, so yeah. it's not important. What's important is the intention of our journey each time we come we come on earth. And I feel this story encapsulates that spiritual element also very beautifully. It's a very deeply, it's a very deeply erotic story from an intellectual love perspective as well. I, you can, I, I you feel can, you, you can approach it from any place that you want. Yeah. If you want to go deeper, there is mm -hmm. depth. You want to stay on the top, just at the surface level. You can even operate that. And that's the great uh, classics do that. The yes. classic is accessible to all times and to all people. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of a classic. Otherwise, it just becomes 
for certain kind of people. But uh, take a Shakespeare play, anybody can access it. And yet at the same time, uh, it used common language, it even uses profanity, it does all kinds of things and it's very well structured. But if you want to go deeper and deeper, you can do that. The same thing happens with Mughal Azam. There are layers and layers, uh, you know, that uh, you can uh, uncover and unpeel, you know, and then you'll feel more enriched and more enriched. It's actually a piece of literature. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody had very rightly said that we should actually teach Mughal Azam script as a piece of literature. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agreed. And for those people out there um, in North America, uh, I encourage everyone to go out and grab your tickets. Um, Anand, can you share where people can go grab their tickets across all 13 cities? Let's send people out. Let's set, let's encourage families. Let's encourage people who aren't South Asian to also you know, come and enjoy the, the spectacle that is this tremendous story, this masterpiece. Share a little bit about that for us, Anand. Where do we send people? Well, they can visit uh, cinemaonstage.com. It has uh, uh, all the shows that are, you know, uh, yet to happen, all the cities. There is just one click. Uh, they can jump to, you know, individual booking links. Uh, they can they can click on you know book my uh, book my ticket and they can they can get the authentic uh, you know uh, websites you know where we are selling the tickets. Uh, there are a lot of scalping websites, so we would encourage yeah. people to go through you know cinemaonstage.com so that they don't land up on 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 the website which are you know selling for like the higher prices. Yeah, uh, we've we've had you know some of the guests uh, who bought tickets you know from the scalping websites and then they find out at the venue wow. that. Uh, those tickets were not rightly priced, you know, from where they bought it. So mm -hmm. we would really encourage, you know, everybody to uh, go through cinemaonstage.com and, you know, go through the authentic websites which are selling the tickets. Uh, Absolutely. This weekend, yeah, this weekend, you know, we are in, in Toronto in yep. se on 7th, 8th and 9th at Meridian Centre, uh, which used to be called as Sony Centre in the past. So we are here and we're waiting to see everybody in Toronto, you know, come and enjoy this masterpiece. Absolutely. And as we close out, Faroz, I want to ask you this question um, because I, I, I always feel that we need to leave people with some aspirational um, thoughts and processes. Anyone out there in North America from any community, any culture that is a budding artist of any kind, I could say director, producer, any, any actor, what advice would you give them based on the many types of projects that you've been on, the many types of people you've worked with, what advice would you give them that you feel is the most valuable for them to embark on a successful and authentic journey in the arts? It's very simple. It should give them a purpose in their life and it should give them happiness. I love that. What a, what a great way to end off. And as we close off, I would love to encourage everyone watching, listening and reading this to support this tour by purchasing tickets and sharing it across your networks. This is not for um, South Asians only by any means. This is for anyone that is an art lover, is a lover of arts, is a um, lover of love. If anyone out there who, you know, has seen the story, you know how incredibly important it is for us to support the arts here in North America for our community. Those of you who haven't seen the story, you don't know what you have in store for you. Yeah. If, you have a, person, if you have a heart, if you have a heart that beats, this is the play. <laughs> this is the play for you. Thank you so much for us. Thank you so much, okay. Anand. What a pleasure to have you guys, you know, give us a bit of an yeah. inside feeling as to why this is such a classic, why it is timeless, and why the community needs to come out and support this here in North America. Thank you so much. And I wish you tremendous success. Thank, Thank you for you. agreeing to come on. Thank you, Raj. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having us.